Welcome to another episode of Rooted Cosmic Soul. This is a transmuting the eye episode. The eye is in the self and the mind's eye. Transmuting the eye is the practice of changing, altering, and lifting the veil on the external and internal exertion of oppression, suppression, and control on your 3D experience. With that changing, altering, and lifting, you are able to release your energy from it and engage in 5D perception, or you can think of it as engage a more authentic, true sense of yourself, your divine self. Today's episode is called The Transmuter's Guide to Earth, because I think Earth is a difficult place to be right now, and yet I also believe that many of us chose to be here at this time in this moment we are necessary and so in this moment there's a lot of grief there's a lot of pain there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of physical emotional spiritual experiences that are on the end of harm and heaviness and There seems to be a dearth of the pendulum swinging back to their side, though if you know where to look, you can see the joy and the beauty that is being on Earth. I wanted to offer this particular video because I noticed my response to a world that, in my experience, has always been quite harmful has always made choices that are oppressive, suppressive, and controlling. My experience of that has significantly shifted since I've started committing and dedicating myself to the world of transmuting energy. And so prior, my experience of the world when these things would happen was a rabbit hole of depression and sadness and hopelessness or spiritually bypassing. And I noticed that I'm doing neither of those things. And I know that there are folks who are similar, who are having similar experiences. There are folks who are also empaths that might be helped by me sharing the ways in which I'm moving that are helping me stay above water, that are helping me stay grounded, that are helping me be part of that which can propel earth and earth's reality toward a better reality, a different reality, a one that is harmonized and in balance and loving and caring. It is not lost on me that the reality created and fed here currently on earth is an experience for many that is harmful, heavy, grief, and sorrow filled, while simultaneously one can also experience healing, lightness, forgiveness, and joy. There is no perception of what is without the perception of what is not. There is an overlay of a dominant, oppressive, suppressive, and controlling energy that can influence the perceptions of the human experience on earth. It can influence what is believed, what is felt to be real, and what is embodied, what is felt in the body. The discord or misalignment the contrast we experience to this oppressive, suppressive, and controlling harmful overlay, that contrast that we experience in our mind, emotion, and body is the authentic self, letting it be known that these perceptions and ways of being are out of sync, out of vibration to the soul's ultimate desires. There are ways of doing and being that can clarify and shift one's experience on earth, especially for those of us who are empaths and care about ourselves, other people, animals, and the planet. Having a feeling of caring can, in these times, be an experience that also creates overwhelm, confusion, and frustration. The Transmuter's Guide to earth is here to offer ideas to consider as you navigate this complex, contradictory, and confusing planet. I'm going to offer seven ideas for you to consider. I think of them as the section of the transmuter's guide to earth called remember and regard. Number one, 
remember and regard you are worthy, period. You don't have to make more money. You don't have to live in a different house. You don't have to speak a different language. You don't have to lose weight, gain weight. You don't have to be more on time, less controlling. You don't have to show up more, show up less, shine brighter, shine less. You don't actually need to do anything to be worthy. You are worthy simply because. And you have to remember and regard that when on earth because that overlay, that oppressive, suppressive, and controlling overlay is really going to push you to believe otherwise. And it's going to push you really in the direction that belief otherwise is all around consuming and being a way that benefits others, not you. So number one, you are worthy, period. Number two is gnosis. There's lots of similar ideas around this idea of gnosis. I've even heard someone call it good gnosis, and that might be the way that it's pronounced. It sounds funny to me. I'm going to go with gnosis, and I'm also going to go with the very simplistic brief definition of know thyself and for the transmuter on earth it becomes really important to know yourself it is a wonderful form of protection and creating healthy connections with others again that oppressive suppressive controlling overlay really wants you to not understand yourself at all because when you are confused when you don't know who you are you're much easier to control and move where that overlay energy wants to move you. That overlay energy is really playing earth like a chess game and considers you a pawn and really wants to move you on this board how it wants. You're moving, but it wants you to think you're moving you, but it's attempting to move you. The more you know yourself, the less power you will give that oppressive, suppressive, and controlling overlay energy, the ability to oppress, suppress, and control you. And in that, you're creating a wonderful form of protection. And in that, you're creating the possibility to have authentic, real connection with other people. The third remember and regard area for their transmuter on earth is remember and regard choice and free will that these things actually exist now i do understand that within a construct a reality in which oppression suppression and control exists this conversation about choice is a tender one and complicated and, and I'm here for it, just not for this video. What I'll say briefly is that I believe choice always exists. I also believe that many people on earth right now, all of the choices before them suck. And there are some people with a multitude of choices before them that don't suck. So, yes, totally. Because a choice sucks doesn't mean that choice doesn't exist. And also part of the overlay is to really control what you see, what you think is possible, which we're going to get to that in, the, in a moment. But it controls what you see. And so sometimes that overlay doesn't even let you see the actual choices that are before you. So remember and regard that choice and free will do exist. And the way that you can confront the oppression, suppression, and control energy is to understand your deepest implanted beliefs about authority and possibility and goes back to number two of like no it requires knowing yourself because i'm not asking you to define 
authority for everybody else or possibilities for everybody else. It's about you understanding your deepest implanted beliefs about authority and possibility because oppression, suppression, and control has without a doubt implanted limiting beliefs on you about your sovereignty, about your abilities, about what is possible for you. Another way to confront these implanted beliefs is to do inner child work. You can look that up. There's all kinds of videos and stuff on and meditations and beautiful practices on YouTube. And also a lot of therapists will do inner child work with you. That's a beautiful way to also get an idea of your authentic self's concept or, or desires around choice and free will. Because being with that inner child and letting it run free, (laughs) you will begin to see your deepest desires and the choices that you want to make, you don't want to make. Number four, and really important to remember in regard, is imminent power exists within you. Imminent power. I-M-M-A-N-E-N-T. It means existing or operating within. It comes from the word imminence in philosophy and theology. It's a term that speaks to the fact or condition of being entirely within something. Imminent power is something you hold within you. It cannot be taken. In my experience, it definitely can be hidden. It can be forgotten, hence why it's on the list of remember and regard factors. You are divine. You are a spiritual being. You are so loved by the universe because you are the universe. And with that comes your sovereignty, your imminent power that cannot be taken from you. You don't have to buy more shit in order to access it. You don't have to hide. You don't have to be a certain way to access it. It really is about peeling back the layers of what oppression, suppression, and control energy has told you, has told your ancestors for millennia, who they are and what they're about. So that could be a video. I mean, all of these could be a video in and of itself, but imminent power exists within you. Remember and regard that. Number five, find and follow your passion. Now, this is really closely connected to a number two, knowing yourself, because the more you engage in the peeling back of the layers of the bullshit that oppression, suppression, and control has told you about who you are, you know, to get to who you say you are, who you know you are, the more you will get to a clear understanding of what your passions are, like what really brings you joy, laughter, that when you do experience the inevitable swing of life into sorrow and grief, there's a memory that this too shall pass because that's life. There's an ebb and flow. And when we are living our passions, the rememberings stay with us and come a little bit easier. And we also get an an idea that the swing of the pendulum is for our experience and an opportunity to remember and follow our passions again, or deepen and better understanding what our passion might be. The sixth, transmuting the earth, remember and regard concept is that you are energy. You are a spiritual being having an embodied experience. As a transmuter here on earth, this is really important because transmuting is about changing, altering, shifting, oppressive, suppressive, and controlling energy. We're born into a world that wants to make us believe it doesn't exist. We're born into a world that wants to make us believe my imminent power is not real, that my worthiness has to be proven. 
but a lot of that starts falling away and just starts not making sense to head or heart when you start really understanding your spiritual being having an embodied experience. You are energy. Being energy to transmute energy might be something easier for yourself to hold on to than trying to only think of yourself as in the material, like dense material body trying to shift, alter, or change filaments of energy or dark matter that you can't see. Well, some people can see it, but maybe you can't see it. Regard your spiritual energetic self as you are experiencing this earth embodiment. Number seven, earth is you and you is earth. Now, I know it's supposed to be earth is you, you are earth. There's something about earth is you and you is earth that makes more sense to me. And as a transmuter, I release the binds and constraints that say I can't use words the way I want to use them, particularly English, because English is so problematic. So earth is you and you is earth. The knowledge, the gnosis, and the imminent power realizations you can experience by engaging earth to its fullest. For me, that means like really understanding elemental earth, creating and maintaining a relationship with earth, air, water, fire, ether, All of these things are part of you. In certain corners of spirituality, there's a saying, and it's something that I say every morning as part of my morning prayers. North, earth of my body. South, fire of my spirit. East, air of my breath. West, water of my blood. And I say that in homage, in respect, in remembering and regarding my connection to the earth and the elements that are here uh, on earth. Those elements do such beautiful things. You know, think about the wind, the ocean, the rivers, trees, fire to keep you warm, air to breathe. It's part of why we have food to eat. It's part of why we have materials to build shit. Earth gives that all to us and gratitude to that as a transmuter can really help when we're feeling the sort of hammer of oppression, suppression and control. Because one of the things it's trying to do is to disconnect you from all things, particularly from yourself. A way to do that is to disconnect you from earth and all things that are are earth related. Uh, A transmuter is going to find a lot of support and energy and healing in being out in nature, grounding a lot, knowing the elements, knowing yourself. Like for example, I am mostly fire, (laughs) my cosmic natal chart. I am mostly fire and air and I have a very little earth and very little water, which means my intention has to be to balance that out, whether that's with Qigong, acupuncture, putting my feet in the earth, being around water quite a bit, having an understanding of flow and movement and how that can move the energy in my body when I need to move it. So remember and regard these things. It will help release some of the heaviness, the grief of this world so that not release it to spiritually bypass, but release it so that we have more space to be part of healing that people experience, to be part of uh, safety and love that people, planet, place experiences. One of the things that you can do to assist you in being and doing the art of remembering and regarding is to create 
dedicated practices and committed rituals that support you in transmuting the eye of the self and the mind's eye energy center daily and multiple times a day because that oppressive suppressive controlling overlay energy never takes a break right does i've never heard of white supremacy patriarchy capitalism homophobia taking a vacation they don't do it Mm -hmm. creating practices that you can step into daily i mean where it doesn't have to take 45 minutes every single time sometimes it's just a moment of gratitude when I'm doing the dishes to slow down enough to be grateful for the water, for the plumbing, for the, the home in which to do dishes, the dishes to clean, you know, and then keep it moving. It could be making sure that the people you care about, you actually tell them, I love you. Right? I love you. I'm thinking about you. I thought about you. Like taking that moment to do it can be part of a dedicated practice and committed ritual that supports you in transmuting the eye. So those are things that I do. I also integrate introspection, self-awareness, transparency, vulnerability, kindness, compassion, grace, love, breath, silence, stillness, slowness, movement, nature, meditation, crystals, herbal remedies, playing with my dog, (laughs) and faith. Integrate what will work for you. Riff off of what I just named and make it work for you and add more for what your reality is. Remember, one of the remember and regards here was around really getting underneath any implanted beliefs around possibility. So sky's the limit. Think about what is going to help you transmute your eye and your mind's eye and run with it. Run free. Is my desire that these ideas, this video will support the beautiful, kind, tender humans walking around feeling wounded and alone right now. You are not alone. And though you may feel wounded, you are not broken. You are worthy, whole, and enough. And you are loved. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude.